Hey friends, it has been a good two years since Vega launched and with the upcoming replacement of Navi with the 5700 XT and the 5700 taking the place of what the Vega 56 and 64 retained, I thought we should give this one last go. Did the Vega 56 ever kind of come up to the expectations that we had for it? Did it ever really supplant the 10 series? Has AMD's fine wine technology kicked in yet? And is it still worth picking up a Vega 56 on the market right now if you can find one for a decent price use versus the NVIDIA alternative? We're gonna answer all those questions in today's video after I tell you about today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. So in case you haven't heard because you've been living on the rock for the past few months, Raid is a brand new collection RPG game. It has amazing storyline, has great 3D graphics, giant boss fights, and more than 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. And best of all, can run in 60 FPS on your phone. That's right. And it's just like all of those classical RPG and strategy games that you used to play as a kid, but now it's in the power of your hand on a phone. It's amazing. And you can look in at all the detail that they put on the champions and the, the, the levels. Everything is detailed. It's amazing. Raid's graphics and storyline are comparable to AAA console releases, but the game is free to play and it has almost a perfect score on the Play Store right now with hundreds of thousands of people reviewing it. The game is growing super fast and we expect to see a huge update this month which will be pure fun for new players. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, check out the special link, click on it, and then you get free 50,000 silver and a free epic champion to start playing with and get your ball rolling. So my friends, Vega 56, it launched a while ago at $400 coming in with 56 compute units, had eight gigabytes of HBM2, which made it very expensive, but it's running on the old GCN architecture, which made it hot and loud and really only good for mining. In fact, it was also really difficult to produce custom coolers for because of the fact that they used HBM2 but AMD didn't properly smooth the stacks so this card only came out I think a good nine to ten months after Vega initially launched that's when we saw custom versions come out by the likes of an XFX or a Sapphire or an Asus and it kind of I don't know if it lives up to the hype anymore. So what we did was we compared it to the 1070, which was its rival at the time of launch, the 1070 Ti, which became its rival after Nvidia realized that they needed to do something about it, and then the RTX 2060, which would be the current 1440p gaming replacement at $350, coming in at $50 cheaper than the Vega 56, and seeing is an RTX card worth it at this point, especially, well, Depending on when this video comes out, everything could be ruined because they're supposed to make their super announcement and dropping the price on the cards and then also making new cards. I, well, it's relevant right now, gosh dang it. Anyways, let's talk about the Vega 56 performance. Continuity error, jump cut to the future. Hey everybody, let's talk about the Vega 56 performance in, uh, this is our benchmarking suite. It's the 8700K Maximus 10 formula, 16 gigs, 3200 megahertz. Uh, the Radeon 7 wasn't in there, it's just for display purposes all liquid cooled, did really well. CPU, never really used because running at five gigahertz, easy peasy. Anyways, let's talk about the performance in the games. And it looks like Vega 56 beats the 1070 pretty easily in most games. If we're looking at all of the performance compared between the four cards that we tested. However, in most games, it still loses to the 1070 Ti. It gets very close to tying with it in the games that are more AMD titles, such as your Devil May Cry 5s and your uh, Resident Evil 2s and what have you. But for the most part, what we saw was the Vega 56 slightly, ever so slightly losing to the 1070 Ti and then handedly losing to the RTX 20. And again, this is not with any sort of overclocking applied to the Vega 56. We could have undervolted it, but we would have gotten more. We went stock for stock on all of them rather than like best case scenario performance because these are all aftermarket cards. We didn't really want to um, have all of these benchmarks going on, but there is some overclocking potential in the memory on the Vega 56. There is some overclocking potential on the rest of the cards, but at stock, the Vega 56 seemingly comes in third place out of all of these cards, which would seem to make it look like it's the worst choice out of the bunch, 
but that would be deceptive if you didn't take a look at where it's positioned in the market currently. So straight up, the 1070 and 1070 Ti obviously are no longer for sale. They're obsolete at this point. RTX cards came out 10 months ago. They're not really going anywhere. But if you look at the used market right now, such as on eBay or Amazon, what you find is that you can get a used 1070 pretty easily for about $300. And then the 1070 Ti market is about $340 to $350, which would put it right in the region of where an RTX 2060 lies, which is about, again, $350. You can pick up a $350 RTX 2060 from literally any retailer on the face of the earth. But when you compare that to the frame rate that you get, all of these cards suck when it comes to comparing it to the Vega 56. If we take all of the average frame rate from every game that we played, and then you divide it by the cost of the card, the Vega 56 comes in at $280 right now, which is absolutely phenomenal if you're buying it brand new. If you're paying, trying to buy it used, you can get one for around $230 to $250, depending on which one you're looking at. There's a decent open box deal on Newegg right now for $238. If we take a look at the price, this is 2.72 frames for every dollar you spend. The GTX 1070 is only 2.29. The 1070 Ti only 2.26, making it the worst value. And then the RTX 2060 is 2.45 frames per dollar. The performance you're getting out of it for the price that you're paying is absolutely phenomenal and hitting 60 FPS at 1440p probably wouldn't be a problem. We just tested everything at Ultra to kind of just push everything to its limits. And the Vega 56 still held up respectively even though it came in in third place in most instances, it's still between 50 and 60 FPS at the highest setting. So just dropping everything down to high, you'll get very good frame rates with that. But then you also have to consider AMD is still kind of pushing their graphics cards out on the market right now with the fact that you can pick up the Division 2 and World War Z for free when you buy the Vega 56 brand new. If you look at that at the cost of the games, that's about $100 value of video games, bringing the cost of the card down to technically $180. And at that price to performance, we're looking at 4.3 frames for every dollar that you spend, which again is phenomenal if you actually want the Division 2 and World War Z. If you don't and potentially just want to sell them off to other Vega owners because you have to have the same card as the, the, the to redeem the code. Anyways, even if you don't include the games, the Vega 56 still kicks the butt of everything else in the 1440p region. And that kind of makes it the card that you should pick up. And considering that the RX 5700 is gonna be coming in at a price that's about $100 more than this, and supposedly will just kind of beat the RTX 2060, I'm pretty sure the Vega 56 is still a worthwhile value. And so even two years after it came out, the Vega 56 looks ridiculously good at this point. It didn't look good when it launched. The price point was a little too high, especially compared to the 1070. And then when the 1070 Ti dropped at the exact same price as the Vega 56, it made even less sense because even now, two years later, the 1070 Ti wins by like one or two frames in most of the new games that have come out this year. However, the price structure that AMD has built for Vega actually is looking really positive. They didn't rest on the fact that they have these cards out there. They've continued to be very competitive with their pricing and $280 for the Vega 56 when the RX 590 launched for $290 back in November makes this a pretty phenomenal pickup. If I could recommend a graphics card that you would pick up right now for 1440p high detail gaming and you just want 60 FPS at that resolution, Vega 56 would actually be my recommendation at this point, especially with the current pricing. If it goes over $300, then you're probably better off picking up the RTX 2060 at this very moment. But Vega 56, just it's blown me away. It's been two years since it launched, but AMD's fine line technology has paid off at least that's not true. The price has come down. That's basically the selling point of the Vega 56 right now is that the pricing is really great. AMD has done a good job of not only making sure their CPUs are priced appropriately, bringing price drops of the Ryzen 2000 series, but they're also doing it on their GPU section as well. So Vega 56 is an easy recommend at this point. But what do you think? Have you noticed that your Vegas are doing really well? Did you pick some up during the mining bubble? Did you? Are you looking to pick some up now? Have you been holding out? Obviously, this isn't a comparison to what could be coming down the market with RTX Super and then also uh, RX 5, 5700 or 5, 
5700XT. We'll have to wait till those come out on July 7th for us to actually uh, let you know if they're worth it. But Vega 56 looking really compelling, even with the RX 5700 being what we expect it to be. If it's faster, then this is less valuable. Anyways, let's go back to uh, pass Brett and continuity error. I have a mohawk because of the charity stream, bye. Don't forget that today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Again, use the link in the video description to get 50,000 silver, as well as a free epic champion, and we can play the game together. Just check me out. I'm Brett Boy, UFD Boy, uh, UFD Boy is my name. Anyways, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next video. Love you too, bye.